Hello, good afternoon. This is Ashutosh Karg here from Furnace Improvements. Uh, we, as you all know, we have been doing fire heater design course, a 12 part series on webinar. And uh, we have been receiving a lot of questions from our attendees. So I thought, why not go ahead and start answering some of these questions so that you have answers and uh, we are going to do a special Q&A session on gradient section design this month. But uh, I'm taking, we got so many questions, I thought maybe we will start uh, answering them and uh, provide some clarity to your uh, questions. So the first question we have and which is a very broad question is, what are the critical design parameters for fire heaters? And this is a question, I mean, I can keep on going on for hours, <clears throat> but we'll keep it short. And uh, we will talk about the critical parameters. Fire heaters, as you all know, have two sites or two important uh, sites as we call it. One is the fluid side and that is the main function of fire heater and second is the fuel side or flue gas side which is providing the heat. So let us look at the fluid side parameters first and see what are the important parameters. The first thing we want to know is how much fluid are we heating? What is the flow rate of that fluid? And that will determine a number of uh, parameters in the fire heater, the number of passes, the tube size, uh, all those uh, uh, hardware, radiant section, convection section design. So we need to know what is the fluid flow rate. It can be given in pounds per hour, it can be given in barrels per day, uh, or kgs per hour, whatever works out, we can use those units. The next important parameter we want to talk about is the temperature, fluid temperature in and fluid temperature out. We are heating the fluid in fire heater, so it's very important to know what is the inlet temperature of this fluid and what will be the outlet temperature. So basically, we can determine the heat duty. How much heat is being absorbed by this fluid. The next thing we want to talk about is the pressure, inlet pressure and outlet pressure. What is the pressure drop allowed across this heater? Pressure drop is one parameter, important parameter, which can <clears throat> determine so many things in your fire heater. So it is very, very important to specify the correct pressure drop or the maximum allowable pressure drop across the heater so that the heater vendor can provide you with the best design. Pressure drop is also relevant for the next parameter, which is the fluid mass velocity. Fluid mass velocity is very important as it determines the inside heat transfer coefficient and also the pressure drop. So higher the mass velocity, higher will be the pressure drop and higher will be the inside heat transfer coefficient. So what is the relevance of inside heat transfer coefficient? It is the ability to remove heat. So as a result, the film temperature will be lower. If you have higher mass velocity, you will have lower film temperature. And film temperature is the one which kind of controls the cracking. One important parameter 
we have to remember in fat heaters is we are heating hydrocarbons and any cracking will lead to carbon formation inside the tubes and that carbon formation will land into coke and ultimately we'll have to shut down the fat heater so maximum film temperature becomes an important parameter if you have two designs one with a film temperature of 750 degree f and the other with 770 degree f you can be assured that the one which is 770 will be coking at a much faster rate and the last and the most important parameter on the fluid side you can even transfer it to the flue gas side is the average radiant heat flux it's the heat transferred per unit area in the radiant section and uh, the lower the flux you specify better it will be for your fire heater in the long run so if you go for a higher flux that means your radiant section is going to be smaller and it could lead to more issues or higher film temperature so some so these are some of the important parameters which we need to specify or need to define clearly when we are designing fire heaters let us move on to the flue gas side or the flu side fuel side so fuel the first thing we need to know is what type of fuel are you firing in your fire heaters today most of the fire heaters are being fired by fuel gas and fuel gas combustion is very simple but if by chance you are firing fuel oil in your fire heater then you need to make sure you burn that fuel correctly using an atomizing steam or atomizing air media so the first thing we need to clarify is what type of fuel are we firing uh, there are other issues associated with fuel oil like vanadium and sodium content in the fuel oil could uh, have a high temperature corrosion next we want to talk about fuel pressure uh, combustion is basically a mixing of fuel gas and combustion air and mixing needs energy so higher the energy the better will be the mixing so you want to use higher fuel gas pressure to get better combustion now on the liquid fuel side you want to have lower viscosity so that you can atomize the fuel oil to fine drops and you can have a good combustion so these are some of the critical parameters next is excess air and uh, excess air is required for completing the combustion uh, most of the clients wants to use minimum excess air for efficiency purposes and uh, we have to ensure that whatever burner we select can deliver that minimum excess air satisfactorily and with the correct flame, shy, flame type. Uh, burners is again very very important what type of burners are we using and how many burners are we using you know most of the heater vendors try to cut down on the number of burners uh, but if you are an owner you want to ensure to have small flames uniform heating so you need more burners that means more cost flame size is very very important in any fire heater operation you want to have flames never touching the tubes or never touching the arch or the convection tubes so 
flame size you have to make sure that you get a good flame size from your burners in your heater uh, another important parameter is burner to tube clearance the higher the clearance the better will be your heater operation better will be heater design but it leads to more cost APF I60 has some minimum burner to tube clearances uh, as they go by then comes the flue gas temperature to stack and uh, it's a direct uh, relation of uh, efficiency so lower the stack temperature higher will be your efficiency so you can go almost as low as 25 degrees approach then is the thermal efficiency I mean in these days of uh, greenhouse gas emissions you want to make sure you emit the minimum carbon greenhouse gases so you want to have the maximum efficiency you can get almost all the way to 90-95 percent these days and the last thing which we want to talk about is the NOx emissions they have become very important in the past 50 years and we want to ensure that our heaters emit the least amount of NOx but NOx comes at the expense of flame quality so you want to have strike a balance between the NOx emissions flame size number of burners so that you get an optimum heater so these are some of the parameters I have listed and if you have any questions on these parameters please feel free to send an email to me or send a message and we'll be happy to answer your questions thank you have a nice day bye